Yeah, g'day, it's, uh, it's Charlie again. Right, so I have been doing some, um, some more experiments um, with the radio. Um, and what I've been playing around with uh, is this DC to DC buck converter, I guess, or buck regulator, which sort of steps up 12 volts up to, what did I say, 36 odd volts. Um, I played around with the VCC on the, uh, the J-Bot. Uh, went from 12 up to um, 16 to 17 odd volts um, and didn't get much of a variation beyond uh, 14 volts. I also played around with the J310 amplifier. Um, so again, this is not a J310, this is a IRF510, what am I saying? Uh, and in this particular case I've also played around with an IRF520. Um, set the uh, quiescent current a range between 100 and 200 milliamps um, and then also played around with uh, a VCC or um, a drain voltage sitting on that of 24 volts. Um, didn't have much success with that and um, I think it's because this is only a single stage here and I was just using a single stage as the driver and I just wasn't driving it hard enough. Um, I don't particularly want to pursue this in this portable radio because I'll then have to go and build uh, another couple of stages to really drive this hard enough, which I don't particularly want to do. It's just more space. So I think I might stick with this arrangement here with uh, the pre-driver here uh, into the J-Bot. But the J-Bot's really got two stages of uh, the 2N3053s sitting here. So I think I might stick with that. And really, at the moment, um, I've reconfigured uh, the J-Bot to have just the standard uh, 12 volts um, and when I key her up and I've got uh, again 40 millivolts peak to peak coming out of the microphone amplifier I'm getting up there on the, the power meter into a dummy load um, over 5 watts so that's 5 watts there and that's 10 watts there so it's, it's sitting on roughly 7 watts um, and as the BD139s and I suspect the 3053s heat up that starts to drop back a bit and settles um, just on or just above 5 watts uh, and that's into a 50 ohm dummy load sitting on 12 volts whole circuit's drawing um, 1 amp at the stage uh, it's hard to say how accurate that is but it's basically um, uh, one amp. I suspect it's slightly more than that, but never mind. Um, so I think at this stage of the game, I, for the purposes of a portable radio and trying to keep things as small as possible, I'm going to stick with this amplifier here, uh, the J-Bot. I'm not going to bother using this. Uh, I will save that for a base rig, and I will have um, another look at using the IRF510 power amplifier. And then I can, because I've got much more space on a base rig, then I can look at having a couple more driver stages to drive that properly. But I think for what I want to do here, um, I think I've probably reached as far as I really want I really want to go. Um, the receiver is extremely good. I'm very, very happy with how that's performing. Um, and uh, the transmit side equally, you know, with five five to six watts coming out then um, I'm, I'm quite happy for that for what I want to do with it um, and the other advantages too of these any 612s and I mentioned in a couple of other videos is, is just the um, because of their active devices I don't have to have um, separate IF amplifiers outside of the mixers so you know from a space point of view that just makes things tidier again um, Again, just recapping, uh, the SI5351 using uh, the oscillator outputs, I've set those for 250 millivolts peak to peak. Um, the NE612s talk about 200 to 300 millivolts, so I just selected a uh, happy medium. Um, if you do bump that up, then you do actually get more power out. So um, I might actually play with increasing that up to maybe 290. Um, and we'll see what that does. So I might actually pause this video and like I say I'll take that up to eh, maybe 280 around there somewhere and we'll just see if that does any difference with um, with the output power. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, this is now sitting on 
uh, a vanity meter band and uh, so just had to rebuild the two bandpass filters this is the transmit bandpass filter and over here is the receive bandpass filter before going to the receive um, RF amp decided to keep that for 80 meters um, it's, it's causing no harm at this stage and uh, what I may look to do is potentially have a bypass switch on that one we'll, we'll see if I want to do that or not um, the coefficients for building the bandpass filters came straight out of solid state design for the amateur radio um, uh, for the amateur so that's uh, a reasonably good book and just had to adjust the code running on the Arduino just to um, set the upper and lower frequency limits so that's where you can find there so um, that was the only major changes to convert that down to uh, down to uh, the 80 meter band right so I'm just going to pause here and I'm going to go and adjust those I'll get the oscilloscope out and um, we'll adjust those up and uh, I'll come back and report on that okay so um, I've adjusted those up to about 280 30 volts peak to peak and same drive going in same everything so all things being equal and we're getting ah what, what, what would you guess there probably another oh, maybe another one one and a half potentially um, two watts so uh, hey that's for nothing and um, we'll just what we'll do is we'll just unkey that and we will just make sure we're still looking good I'm going to do is just change this to a to an audio file and we'll monitor that across the room so let me just turn off that and then so let's just turn that volume up uh, and, and checking the surface for defects if error correction was in place right so that's uh, transmitting into a dummy load and the other radio has also got a dummy load sitting on it and that um, from a uh, sounds not too bad. So I think what I might do tonight is um, do some on-ear checks. We'll uh, see if we can establish a couple of contacts with the uh, with the main antenna, and uh, we'll get a couple of signal reports. Um, and then following that, if that goes well tonight, then I'll look to tear this down and uh, to repackage it and put it into its box. Um, and that's what we'll do for this particular radio. And then. Um, It'll be fun and games um, creating a, uh, a suitable 80 meter antenna to take away. But uh, yeah, that's good. So I'm um, quite happy with that. And um, like I say, the next radio will be a base rig, which will um, I can expand into some other areas which I haven't actually done before. Um, in other words, getting a uh, that sort of a MOSFET style amplifier to work well. Anyway, I shall call it quits here because I'm probably starting to ramble just a tad and um, we will catch up with you on the next one. Cheers. Yeah, good day. It's ZL2 Charlie Tango Mike on the side. Can I have a very quick radio check, please? ZL2 Charlie Tango Mike transmitting QRP over. Uh, was that ZL3 Victor Papa? Go ahead. ZL3 Victor Papa, ZL2 Charlie Tanga Mike. Yeah, thanks. Uh, name here is Charlie. Just um, doing a quick uh, on-air radio check of a, uh, a small homebrew QRP rig and just wanted to get an idea of um, how well it was getting out. Uh, the QTH, QTH here is Wellington. Wellington, over. Roger, roger, sir. Somebody else called me up. Thank you. It's much weaker than New York. Five and nine. Solid copy. And good and solid. Okay, I'll leave you with somebody else is calling me as well. So just uh, stand by. Oh, Charlie, well, uh, we'll leave it with you. And uh, I'll listen to the other station who's been trying to get the top of the So I just got a few words on the stage. Very weak. Station 
Oh, that's good. Uh, didn't quite work out where he was, but um, ZL3 Victor Papa Portable. I can't hear that other station. There were definitely two stations there, um, Gareth, but they kept on bubbling over. Yeah, I couldn't quite hear the other stations, but uh, I think Charlie Mike's station was loud and there. Okay, uh, okay, we're gone. Oh, loud and clear, which is nice. Wasn't me. There was a QRP station in there, but um, would you like to uh, give us your call sign over? Well, I'm QRP, but... No, I'm just down to the sound of it, uh, Gareth. There was a QRP station, I didn't catch the call sign, because he was on top of the other one or underneath him, I'm not sure. Uh, but he was looking for a radio check, so, but he uh, appears to have vanished. Um, Maybe you'll pop up again later. Okay, Gareth, have a good one. You've got it in a nice spot there, so enjoy your uh, your long weekend there. Is that all 3VP? Is that all 2BHP? Bye-bye. Is that all 2 Yeah, is that all 2 ACA? Is that all 3VP? Bye-bye. Yeah, that's right, Gareth. Uh, how are you, Tom? <coughs> I, I, was, I had been looking for a while, but I've been, uh, I've been uh, changing the band. Well, that's good. So you gave me a loud and clear, which is good. 5 by 9 So that's good. So clearly she's getting out, which is good. So um, I think based on that, we will uh, tear this down now and um, and we'll look to put it into the box. Um, I'm very happy with, um, with with the overall configuration, especially with these uh, NE612s. It's certainly saves some space in regards to not having the need to have... Make sure I'm not being called. Uh, don't have to have the need to have external IEF amplifiers because of the uh, the active devices. So that's worked out really well. So anyway, so I'm going to leave that there, um, and uh, I will tear this down. And the next video will be hopefully it's all in the box. Um, I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks on business trips, so that may take a little while. But um, anyway, uh, we will certainly catch up. And um, if I don't get a chance to get done before Christmas, I certainly wish everybody a merry Christmas. And um, we will be back very shortly. Anyway, 73s everybody, and um, it was good to get that call tonight, so um, that's fantastic. Anyway, 73s, and uh, we'll see you later.